Now, before this latest shipwreck, the UN says at least 1,000 migrants died trying to cross the Mediterranean this year alone. The spokesperson for the UN Secretary General confirmed he was horrified at this latest tragedy and called for safe routes and pathways for people seeking a better life. Today we have yet another tragic illustration. I can tell you the Secretary General was horrified by the reports of a shipwreck that took place off the coast of Greece, claiming the lives of scores of women, men and children. He stressed, as he said before, that every person searching for a better life uh, needs a dignity and safety. This is yet another example of the need of member states to come together and create orderly, safe pathways for people forced to flee and for comprehensive action to save lives at sea and reduce perilous journeys. The only way we're going to get safe pathways, the only way we're going to um, avoid people going on these perilous journeys, the only way we're going to get criminal gangs out of this equation is if countries of origin, countries of transit and countries of destination work together. We have the instruments, the Global Compact on Migration, international refugee law. It's a matter of, in a way, political leadership and political uh, courage and determination. Well, the RISE chief correspondent, John Cookson, has been monitoring developments and joins us now live from London. Thank you for joining us, John. Hi, ladies. Great to see you. Now, what's the latest on this uh, sea tragedy? Well, the search for bodies in the Ionian Sea goes on today, and it is bodies because the, there's no chance of anyone being rescued alive. Uh, uh, reports uh, still say that uh, uh, the number on the boat that uh, apparently capsized uh, for, for some reason uh, uh, was around 750. Now, if they've rescued some 80 people, that means there are um, 600 plus missing and you can see from the uh, image of that boat, that boat was actually packed. There were several decks on there and we're hearing today that there could have been a hundred children in the hold. Now this uh, boat apparently sank very, very quickly within 10 to 15 minutes according to survivors and it sank in the deepest part of the Mediterranean which is about five kilometers uh, down. Uh, so, uh, you know, the chances of anyone surviving that now are, are, are nil and whether indeed the authorities will be able to find the boat in that depth of water, we'll have to wait and see. Bodies have been taken to a morgue outside uh, Athens and uh, uh, they're being photographed, the faces are being photographed because uh, the, these migrants, they're, most of them were single men in their 20s, they don't pay for the, the trip themselves, say it costs $1,000 to pay a people smuggler to get you from Libya to some place of safety in Europe. Families clump together to, to pay this money. And so those survivors are absolutely desperate to get hold of their families back home in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Palestine, Egypt and Syria, and to tell them that they're, they're alive. And uh, of course, the families. Uh, waiting for news of, of loved ones uh, uh, is, of course, excruciating for them. So a very, very sad story, uh, and uh, uh, the chances, as I say, of finding anyone else alive are, are, are absolutely zero. So it's really sad to know that it's actually at a zero at this point. But are there any theories, John, regarding why this boat sank to begin with? Well, apparently this boat was intercepted, uh, first of all, by the Italian Navy, who patrol that part of the Mediterranean uh, uh, on Tuesday. And in fact, uh, a, a Greek ship uh, in intercepted the boat and, 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 and gave them water and food, which they took on board. Uh, the Greeks say they were offered many, many times the option of, of, of landing in Greece, which may or not may or not be true because Greek have, Greeks have a policy of pushing boats back out into the Mediterranean rather than uh, welcoming them into ports like, uh, uh, say, on the island of Lesbos. All those days are long gone now. The, the Greeks have a very tough policy. Uh, so uh, they were, the boat was offered help on Tuesday. Uh, it, it sank on Wednesday, and the theory is that they had, uh, had an engine failure, or they ran out of fuel because they were running very, very fast uh, in the water. And at some point, 
number of people moved to one side of the boat and causing it to capsize. Now, these young people who were on the boat, they wouldn't know how to swim. It's not very much part of the culture in those countries to uh, go for swimming lessons, certainly not in, say, in Afghanistan or Syria. Uh, uh, so none of them could swim. So as soon as the boat went over 60 miles, uh, well, 80 kilometers off the Greek coast, that, that was it. All right, John. The Greek coast uh, guard did say that the spot is close to one of the deepest areas of the Mediterranean. Why do migrant boats push on to Italy instead of uh, landing in, say, Malta? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, the reason is that, that this boat uh, left, uh, as usual, from uh, Tobruk in, in Libya on the North African coast. Malta is could be the first port of call, but Malta is a dead end. It's an island and the Maltese just don't accept uh, migrants. And so once they land there, they, they, they can go nowhere else. And, and the Maltese would deport them back, back to their own countries if they can. Uh, the Greeks as I say, have changed their policy. Uh, Greek islands were overrun with migrants uh, uh, some years ago, and they now have a very strong policy of escorting boats back out to sea. So uh, they press on to uh, the Sicilian island of uh, uh, Lampedusa, uh, where there's a, a whole processing unit there uh, for, for uh, migrants, and from there they uh, cross into Italy proper and then in, into the rest of Europe. Uh, so that's why they, they aim for Italy and uh, go straight past uh, countries like uh, Malta and Greece. Well, John, will this accident change anything in respect to, you know, migrant trade? I'd like to say yes, but it won't. Uh, there's a lot of wringing of hands and three days of mourning and all that kind of stuff. But uh, look, the people smuggling is a multi-million dollar business. So many people are making so much money out of it. You have the people smugglers themselves. Uh, you have uh, corrupt politicians, and I've done stories about this in Greece and in Italy who, who take money. Uh, and you have uh, coast guards uh, and naval captains who take money uh, to either escort a boat or not. Uh, the, there's so many vested interests in this, that, uh, uh, and the laws are, uh, uh, you know, are so lax in, in international waters that this, as bad as it is, and it's not the worst, the, the worst uh, accident was back in 2015 when a thousand migrants died off Libya. Uh, it's not going to make any difference. This people smuggling operation is just too big, too ingrained, and people are making too much money out of it. All right, then. Thank you so much, uh, John Rise, Chief Correspondent, for joining us today on uh, Newsday.